Today we've got the new Brewbill X2 Jacketed Conical. And if you don't understand what jacketing gets for you, stay tuned because we're about to go over it. So if you like this video, be sure to like and subscribe our channel. Also comment below, let us know how you're cooling your wort or what you liked about this video. So we all know controlling fermentation temperature is the key to making great beer. We make wort, the yeast make the beer, so controlling it. So Chris, let's talk about the history of, of fermenting and, and way of cooling it. You've been brewing a lot longer than I have, so let's start there. We've helped thousands of people get through their summers to control their temperature. And you know, one of the things you'll always hear is the number one tip from a pro brewer is almost always fermentation temp control. So we've been doing it on the cheap, all the way up to glycol jackets. So let's begin. The first thing I always have people do who have no budget and just wanna try fermenting, but they wanna keep their temp down. And that's as simple as a wet blanket on top of the carboy. And I say blanket, more like a towel or something. And ideally, even a trough underneath that, it can wick as it's drying out, it can pull more water up. Bonus, you can put some ice cubes in there to help keep it a little bit cooler. It's not very elegant. You have to really attend to it all the time by adding more water and adding ice, and it's not gonna get you that much. Five, 10 degrees maybe off of like a peak fermentation, but it's not gonna certainly give you lager temperatures or cold crashing. Yeah, I started by doing exactly that, you know, in, in a uh, spare bathroom we had, and I put it in the tub, so, you know, it was kind of nice, clean. Oh, you mean the most unsanitary part the of your house? The most unsanitary part of the house. Uh, then moved over, and I think this would be the next evolution, is getting a refrigerator off Craigslist. Or Absolutely. Whatever. whatever you can find. A fridge, a chest freezer, a dorm fridge. Usually that's the evolution, is some sort of refrigeration technology. Um, and if you could find it for free, or cheap, even better. Uh, my favorite are the glass door merchandisers that, you know, Snapple and Pepsi, Coke, whatever, come in because you have a nice glass door. They are commercial Kiger, uh, compressors, so they, they use up more electricity, but it is awfully nice with the flat stainless bottom. But in those, you're gonna need to get a temp controller, make sure it's rated at the power that you're gonna consume with that, um, with that unit, and you're gonna have to figure out how to program it. Not very difficult, but it is an added level. Once you go there though, as long as your fermenter fits in it, it's pretty rad. Mm -hmm. Then I think the next from that would be uh, what I'll call just like immersion chilling. So, so putting in a coil or something like that um, and, and using uh, maybe an ice bath or a glycol bath. Is that, am I heading down the right step I in the think next so. one? I mean, that, that's really it. I, I, my old kegerator, I used to have a five gallon keg of water in it. Mm -hmm. and a sub pump and I would try to go through something that would help cool down my fermentation. I first started with copper and I tried to do it around a carboy and you had mm -hmm. lots of air gaps and it was kind of a nightmare. Uh, you got tubing running around the garage that are leaking <laughs> a little bit because I was in college, but it did help. It did help keep that carboy a little bit cooler. You know, the more you insulated the outside of it, the better. Looked terrible. Um, but it, it was effective. What I like about that, what, which I don't like about a lot of the current technologies, which are these coils or sticks, is you were doing it from the outside, and so it was more sanitary. So let's well, talk a little bit about that, about you know these coils that go in, that kind of stuff. Exactly. I was in a glass carboy, so it was really hard to get something inside of there. If I could have, I probably would have. <laughs> um, because that is going to be more effective because the actual coil comes in contact with the beer, which case we can no longer use that copper, we gotta use stainless. Um, and that is, those are very popular now because of their price is relatively inexpensive. And we've used them in videos in the past. Um, the Temp Twister being a good example of one of them. They're cool, pun intended, but they are a nightmare to know that they're sanitary. Uh, each one of those bends, it, and especially where the coils meet each other, is a nice little spot for something to hide and be hard to clean, let alone sanitize. 
All right, so I think that leads us to kind of the, the, the next gen, if you will, which is the jacket. Uh, you know, as we, we talked about, this is what commercial, this is what I used when I was a pro brewer. Jacket is, is you know, kind of the way to go from a sanitary standpoint, from a cooling efficiency standpoint. Um, so that kind of leads into this jacket, right? Let's talk about that. Yeah, I mean, this, this jacket's pretty rad. And um, typically you would pair this with a glycol chiller. So now you have a large source of very cold liquid under a pump, meaning it's gonna be circulating through and it's gonna have a temp sensor that you're putting right into here. Then you come into your ports on the conical, you're gonna come in the bottom. It's made in a way that the liquid is forced a direction before it comes out of the top so that it can't just quickly go from this port up to this port. Channel, yeah. It has to channel around the jacket, meaning you're spreading that cool all the way around. You're both cooling, but more importantly, you're removing the heat. And keep in mind, the top of your ferment is somewhere around here, so you're cooling it in the hottest part of the wart. Bulk, so yeah. it's super effective. When I was running this in the, in the garage, you know, running at lager temperatures, on 90 degree days and 90 degree garage and i would like listen to it like okay how long is it running and it would run 15 20 minutes and then nothing for hours and you're just like wow that is really effective during peak fermentation it was you know it is i did have the neoprene jacket on there which then held the hot out or the cold in whichever way you want to look at it but so nice when we took it when we were done we took the lid off there's nothing in there to clean except for the sides. It's a mirror finish and literally just hosing it down took off 98% of all the trube and such right from the conical. Let's talk about the, the cooling medium, right? We, we mentioned ice water earlier. You could totally do that with this jacket. You're going to be replacing the ice, but what is glycol? A lot, a lot of people, you know, we're throwing this term around a lot, but what the heck is glycol? It allows you to go below the freezing point. As we all know, water is uh, 32 degrees Fahrenheit. It freezes zero Celsius, but glycol is a food grade solution that allows you to go below that. So you're pumping, you know, 27, 28 degree Fahrenheit uh, liquid through here, which is just, you know, a lot better than, you know, 38, 42 degree uh, ice water that you might be Your using. temperature differential, yeah. your delta T is, is, yeah. is even bigger because you're able to use glycol. Well, these things are now in stock and shipping now. So to check them out, go to morebeer.com forward slash X2 and check out all the different features laid out for you nicely and get yours on order today.